I wanted to show you an example of how closed and open-ended pipes have an application in music. And I'm not going to show it with a real musical instrument because, trust me, you do not want to hear me play a musical instrument. Uh, the only thing I ever learned how to start to play a little bit was the flute. And after sticking with it for four years, I was still pretty miserable bad at it. But what I'm going to show you is uh, something called a tuning fork. And this one, it might be a little bit bigger than most of the tuning forks you're used to seeing, but that just means that it has a particular frequency. It doesn't make it louder or something like that. And in fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to get this tuning fork to play a sound for you to sort of hear a little bit. Now, one thing I'm not going to do is you never want to hit a tuning fork on like a hard desk edge or something like that. That's really bad for it because it chips the metal and this one's got a few chips in it. But um, that actually changes the frequency that it plays then because it, it damages it. So what I've got is actually an old baseball and I'm going to use that to hit it. Use that or the bottom of your shoe, something like that. That's best. So I'm going to hit it. Now you might hear that a little bit. I'm not sure how well the microphone's going to pick it up. But when I hit it, it makes a note, but it's not very loud. And that's because this tuning fork, even though it looks like a really big one, um, it doesn't displace the air very much. When it's vibrating, it's just doing these little motions. And so the amplitude of the sound waves it's making are pretty wimpy, not very loud at all. Now I've got this. The tuning fork that you can see on this is exactly the same as that other tuning fork. It's the same size, the same frequency and everything. But the difference is that it's been attached to this box that is open on one end, closed on the other. That makes this technically a closed-ended pipe, basically. Closed on one end, but open on the other. But this box wasn't cut to just any old length. It was cut to a very specific length because what they want to make sure is that the box, as a big, empty, open, basically air tube, um, has a frequency that matches the frequency of this particular tuning fork. So what will happen is, I can still make this make a sound, but now the box, because it's acting as a closed-ended uh, tube, it will allow that sound to resonate and the effect is quite dramatic. It's a lot louder, like crazy insane a lot louder. The tuning fork itself has not changed. It's just that now we're amplifying its sound basically by allowing the box to act as a resonating chamber for it. The example I can give you that is very, very similar to this then is a guitar. And I mean like a regular acoustical guitar because as you're strumming the strings, the empty chamber that has a hole in it is acting in a similar fashion to this so that it can allow that sound to resonate and actually act as an amplifier. Um, the empty box that makes up like a violin or a cello or you know something like that basically is doing the same thing as well. And it allows you to take a sound being made by a string or uh, you know something like that. And even though that sound is actually quite low, it's allowing you to amplify it a whole bunch and really improve the, the, um, the amount of the decibels that you're producing so that people across a room can hear it. So kind of a neat example of how resonance and a, uh, in this case, a closed-ended pipe um, can actually have some sort of an application to musical instruments. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.